Hey Sam, how you feeling today, man? I'm doing good. Hey man, the topic of the day is about racism. You feel mm-hmm. me? And this is going to be a long part series. And I'd like to know, have you ever experienced anything that was being racial profiled by you? And if so, would you like to tell us about it? Uh, plenty of times. The most recent one, a most flagrant one, uh, one of the most flagrant ones was yesterday at the Atlantic Guns um, shop in Rockville, Merle. What happened, bro? It was a, a white man in his 30s or 40s with a, a brown beard. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a facility. I asked him where can I buy a gun holster. He um, didn't want to help me. It was zero customer service. There's a lot of aggression. To the point where you could cut the, cut the tension he had for me with a knife. Mm. And when I finally found a damn holster for my Glock 17, mm. he tried to come up with an excuse not to sell it. Mm. Oh, it doesn't have the tension on the thing. It don't have the tension. I may not be able to sell it to you. Mm. I said, sir, I'm in an emergency. I got work. I got to get me a holster right now. Mm. As I look on the case, it does have the tension on it. I'm looking at it like, yo, if you did with my, if you're so bigoted that my money wasn't good for you, that's all the fuck you had to say. Mm-hmm. Like, it, there's no need for you to be hiding the, 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 the bigotry. No need for you to hide that shit. Yeah, that's sad, bro. That's <laughs> sad, man. And, uh, did he, was he an older dude or was he young? Or? No, he, he was in his 30s or 40s. So he a young kid, damn dear, was taught this bullshit while he was young. Yeah. That's the part that gets me, yo. It's not, it's not fucking physical no more, man. It's more mental. But it was like, yo, he was so fucking bigoted. You could cut the racism, the tension in the shit, where you could, you could feel the hatred. Mm. And then in the end, he was trying to walk the shit back, but it's like not too little too late. I don't even want to shop at that store. It's the Atlantic Gun Shop in that box of Mm-hmm. Damn. And then you look at the case. I turns out I bought an ambidextrous case that also can still carry. So whether you left-handed, right-handed, if you want to conceal it or not conceal it, it was a four-in-one deal. So it was a good deal for 40 bucks. But he was such a bigot. He, like, he didn't even want to help me look for that He was like, I'll pour. And that was it. If you can't find nothing, I don't have it. And I'm like, yo, but I see you going above and beyond for everyone else. Mm. Now, keep in mind, they come in with an attitude, didn't do shit to them. Mm-hmm. I'm just simply looking for an author to work my damn shit. That's all I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Wasn't no, no political shit. Wasn't bothering nobody. What about the, uh, did he have any Confederate flags, or? No, he didn't have nothing up, but he, he didn't have to put up shit to, for you to get what he was on. Right. When you you can see where he was a fucking bigot. Now, let me, let me ask you this, bro. When you stepped in the store, right, did you feel, mm-hmm. did you feel any bad vibes, any negative energy, anything out of Woodward, as far as, like? No, not until I dealt with his ass. Oh, I because everything was chill until he brought himself in. He was working the front. I wanted the older guy because he wasn't on that bullshit. Mm. But I, I kept running into him and he was on that bullshit. Mm. Oh, okay. Let me ask you a question, brother. How do you feel about white people that are racist, but they're racist with, with minority children? How do you feel about that? It's a big ass walking paradox. It is. And they don't know. They'll get lunch by the KKK just as fast, if not faster, because to bigots like David Duke and the KKK, they say one the, the classic line. What I hate more than a nigger is a nigger lover. So yeah, no matter how you try to put that shit, if you have had black children, if you had children by a black person, your ass is in a boat with us. So basically what you're saying is they're hypocrites, basically. Yeah, they're being fucking hypocrites. Because you chose to biologically reproduce the human race with a person you claim to be a fault against. Yeah, it's a double standard. Well, it 
Okay, girl. It's a double standard. That, that, that shit is, is dumb as fuck. Yeah, yo, like, the reason why I asked that is because it's, it's, I, I dig it. Like, a lot of a lot of black folks, they get offended, like, why why black people trying to act like us, dress like us, sound like us, be like us, talk like us, whatever type of swag that we have. Now, me personally, I'm not a racist. I'm not an anti-Semite. I'm nothing. I just spit straight facts as far as what I've read. As far as the experiences that I've dealt with. Now, me per se, I can give a pass to some white people. Okay? The reason why I say that is because if you understand my culture, as far as my struggle, my definition of my race, of what I represent, if you understand what poverty meant, what I've been through, the struggles, the music, the lingo, the, the style of dress, anything that involves us as a whole, far as the black struggle is concerned, you can get it past for uttering that word. What's up, my nigga? Now, when you utter that word, nigga, that's where I draw the line. There's a big difference. Between Elon and I and Mm-hmm. But why 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 do they use that terminology? Well that's because they're trying to have their kid in eighty-two. But once you start having black kids, your ass is your ass is done. You done in that world. Because in the eyes of biggest, you did the ultimate of sign of blasphemy. You recreated human beings that are that are half black, half white. But you still so for them, you would never have a choice. You you can't come back home. Basically, you still can't drop the M bomb and still. And no, you're right. You still bridge. can't drop the M bomb, but but you burned your bridge with with bigots if you have kids by a person who ain't run black, who ain't white. Right, you ain't nothing but a damn nigger loving your goddamn self. Any way you look at it, you can sugarcoat that shit. You can put motherfucking whipped cream on top of that bitch. Nigga, you're still a fucking nigga, look. Any way you look at it. Let's just let's just say this one. I got one for you. What about fuck the mama? What about the grandmama of the mama that had the kids? What are their bigots? What are the granddaddy and the grandmama of bigots? Then what? Nah, they did the shit, but they won't. They won't ever have a, a, a place in the store in history. What if the grandmama don't like niggers, right? Notice I'm going to use that terminology. What if they don't like niggers, right? But they love their grandchildren. What's the difference? It's not. It's misillusioned information. It's basically that they're lying to themselves. Still trying to have that kick and eat it too. <laughs> so anyway, you look at it, brother. You're still being a hypocrite. Yeah, you're, trying to, you're, you're just trying to have your kick and eat it too. That you can say that shit all you want. You're still you're still a big a bigot is a big. Let me ask you a question, brother. Why are we hate so much, yo? It became normalized. We talk about cancel culture. Life's been hated since the moment we got shipped to the store. Mm-hmm. Break it down yeah, for me. What's the size? Break it down for me. So basically, they 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 normalize the hatred and prostitution of blacks to keep us under control. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it all started. It all started with one slave rebellion, and um, that 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 was so um, shocking to them that they said the only way to keep black people alive is to inflict um, torture and violence on them. Is that the reason why we still being exploited still to this day, like with music videos, the rappers and shit, being strippers and all this extra mm-hmm. goofy shit? That's where it all started though. Sexual like abuse. Psychological warfare never ended. What do they call it? Sexual exploitation? Yeah. Well we was already exploited since the niggas came out the boot. 
one thing they just did was just legalize the shit and just make money off of it now. Mm-hmm. But this is the part that gets me, brother. White people stopped using the word nigger like in the early 80s, right? I had to do some research on this shit, right? The shit died down in the 70s. You feel me? It came back a little bit in the 80s. It died a little bit. But who brought it back? The swag? We did. We swagged it down like around the mid 90s. And it came like perfect as example. There's black people and there's niggas. Who said that statement? Chris fucking Rock. Okay? Chris Rock uttered the word niggas. Then you had NWA uttering the word niggas. With a gang called niggas with attitude. So, we the ones that brought this shit back. But see, notice, notice how I, I, I said the word nigga. We used the A. We swagged it down. We swagged it down. Of a word. But that ain't the only word used in this province. You got porch monkey. Mm-hmm. Let's monkey. Monkeys, coons. Uh, African spear sucker shrines. And they use all kinds of shit for it. And there was no getting around it. So the only way to get through hell, it's a saying, better, better to reign in hell than to serve in heaven. So people decided, I'll take ownership of what the fuck is a prison of me. So when we talk about this shit, why, why are they extra sensitive about this topic? But when we talk about it, it's a fucking problem. We're, we're, we're anti-Semites. Now, in regards to that, with Kanye West and Kyrie Irving and Nick Cannon, all three of them wasn't saying overt big of the shit like Mel Gibson did. They just simply identified as Hebrew Israelites. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. And they, they found that the genetic Hebrews are from all walks of life. God said, I'm going to scare you across the train and foreign land. They're finding the Hebrews across the entire world. Mm-hmm. So they got to stop. And also, in America, we have freedom of religion. So if a person wants to identify as being Jewish, they got that right. Right. Absolutely. I can totally agree. Because you can't control ownership. Like if a, if a white person said they're black, they're black. Like I'm not going to sit here and control. I don't have ownership or a license system over my race, right? Exactly. And the same racial movement is taking off. People are identifying as other races now. We got to accept it the same way we got to respect other people's sexuality. Right. You ever heard of a white African? Yeah. A lot of them came to Africa during after World War II when Hitler fell. Right. So have you actually literally seen a white African before? Yeah, I've seen those all the time. I've seen a white African before. Yeah. And nobody knows... It's called the Matrix Gene. Mm-hmm. We produce every single race. We know something in our DNA can diversify. So let me ask you this, bro. Are white people 100% pure Caucasian? No. All races are derivatives of the African gene. All races are. Exactly. That's the whole fucking point. That's why I asked you that question, bro. There's no such thing as a purebred any fucking more. Everybody's a mutt in this goddamn U.S. soil, man. Everybody's mixed with something. There's no such thing as a purebred. It's all about melanin today. Who's melanin is stronger? Who's, who's melanin is the weakest? You feel me? So I, I don't understand. Like, like when these skinheads and shit... And, and the Ku Klux Klan talk all this propaganda and bullshit. They ever thought about taking the time to be researching their own ancestry? No. You feel me? They and, don't want to. Because, see, people ain't going to really look into shit. They would rather let the ignorance be the data. Uh-huh. Like, one KKK leader found out he was black and Jewish the whole time. 
He felt like Dave Chappelle, huh? He found out he was black and Jewish, and they told him, they said, yo, you know you're out, right? Mm. And he was hurt that they were, they were right. They said, you're not fair blood, you're not white. That said, it kind of remind me to uh, almost like the domino effect a little bit. Like, remember the, the, the episode on the Chappelle show? Mm-hmm. Remember the black white supremacists? Mm-hmm. How this nigga was talking all that bullshit propaganda and shit. How he was brainwashed and he was blind. He went to white schools, all that goofy shit. Kept calling him a nigger and all this and all that shit. But for some reason... They, they, they bamboozled the child and told that man he was a white man. Ain't that about a bitch? Mm-hmm. Then the part that had me real fucked up, he talking all this goofy shit like, like he, he the head leader of the clan, which he really was. Just so the, 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 the nigga that he was rolling with was capping the whole fucking time. When the nigga took off his fucking hood, nigga, at this pat rally, they ain't touched the man. They ain't touched the man. They said that he stepped down and he divorced his wife after all these years. He said he divorced his wife because she was a nigga lover. Yeah. Ain't that some shit? That's some shit for your ass. Mm. 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 Tomorrow, uh...